Uh, welcome everyone to the Sacred Journey to India presentation by Prachi Jain and uh, Lisa and I are doing the tour as well. We're, we're, I'm going on the north and south and Lisa's doing the north tour and um, Prachi's going to give us a run through on the tour and thank you all for being here. Thank you uh, Prachi again. I'll turn it over to you and be quiet so that you can get started and we can ask questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Bill. And thank you for joining everybody. Uh, thank you for coming together on, um, you know, in this community. I know Bill has such a wonderful community, Bill and Lisa. So it's, it's really exciting for me to um, extend this trip over. And as I mentioned to a few folks earlier, a few minutes ago. India for me, it's it's my home. Um, I do live in Boston, so I am kind of a bridge, I think, between a lot of people who are not familiar with India. And uh, I've been back about 33 times now. Uh, and each, each trip is very transformational. So Bill and I met at the Rupert Spire retreat uh, last year, and we were discussing uh, the power of community, the power of travel, and uh, being able to visit sites that are so energetically charged and how that can really deepen your own personal spiritual path and journey. Um, the last time that I went to Rishikesh, which is where we'll be going on the North trip, I went for a Muji retreat. Uh, so I am an avid retreat goer and uh, India, I think for me, uh, apart from the teachers and the teachings, there is just, uh, there's this energy that um, I tap into every time I go there. And that's really why I want to, I want to show you how that feels. And uh, of course, everybody has their own individual experience in India, but, um, you know, either, either way, it's very visceral. So uh, the way that we're um, uh, going to structure tonight is I'll talk a little bit. But I really would love to hear from you all. And if there's anything you're really excited about, uh, if there's any particular activity or a place that you're really excited about or a question comes up, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, I may just stop and quickly answer it or I'll run through the presentation and then in between I'll answer questions. So uh, let's get started. Let me go ahead and share my- Before, oh. you, before you get started, um, uh, Prachi, would you uh, mention, or maybe part of your talk, would you mention that uh, in putting this together, uh, we really have uh, an interest in the experience of India. Uh, even though prachi has been there 33 times, each time that we would meet to talk about this tour, she would get super excited about uh, the activity, uh, the experience of, of going to these places. And since we first announced that we were going to uh, have this tour, uh, Prechi has uh, has done other tours. She just came back from Mexico recently, and she uh, has recently become yoga certified. And she does she does yoga uh, training, and so she does she'll be in, offering uh, an optional yoga uh, sessions in the mornings. And I will I love guided meditations. I love to to facilitate guided meditations. I'll be offering a guided meditation every morning. So when we go on this tour, we're really going on a sacred journey tour. This is, for me, this is a high vibe uh, location for the greatest masters the world has ever known, the, the origin of the greatest teachings that have come from India to the West and to our, the teachers that we follow they've they've been to india they've they've followed their teachers are teachers from india if, if, whether it's rupert or M muji or jean klein or francis lucille all of the teachers that th were their teachers they all came from here 
And I'm very excited about that. And this is a, a heartfelt uh, excitement for me to be able to uh, have a, a tour set up by someone like Preachy that she's got this same vibe. She's got the excitement and the love for truth that each one of us has. And so it's going to be an experience. And so I just wanted to share that first. And thank you, Preachy. I'll uh, give you back the mic. Thank you. Yeah. And, and absolutely. You know, I, I think that's something that uh, Bill, you and I really bonded over. Um, for me, uh, I, I started on the non-dual or Advaita Vedanta path, if you're familiar with it, uh, because I was called to Ramana Maharishi's ashram, which we'll be visiting on the South Tour back in 2010. And at that point, I didn't know who Ramana Maharishi was. I just entered his ashram and I said, oh, this is what peace feels like. This is what maybe heaven might feel like. Uh, and then it was only eight months later that I found out who's Ramana Maharishi. And I was like, oh, I went to his, I went to his ashram. And so um, what a blessing, you know, what a blessing if you're joining us on the South trip that you already know who he might be, or you know of his teachings, or you know of teachers that have uh, learned from him or followed him. Uh, and to be able to see and experience uh, that area and that space where uh, he did all of his lectures and his teachings um, and see India through a non-dual lens or through, through a spiritual lens. Um, so yes, thank, thank you so much, Bill, for adding that. And I'll go ahead and start sharing a little bit more about each of the tours. And again, feel free to use the chat button we can uh, we can definitely answer questions as we go along. So one question that actually came up a few minutes ago was, um, well, first of all, what are the tours and the dates? So the first tour is called Sacred Teachings of India and it's from December 1st through the 10th. And that starts in Bangalore, which is South India. And then we travel to Tiruvannamalai which is, um, if you're familiar with the Arunachal Hill, it's uh, considered a manifestation of Shiva. And that's where uh, teachers like Ramana Maharishi um, ended up following uh, just by word of mouth that there was this, uh, this hill that is very energetically charged. And um, so Ramana Maharishi spent the last years of his life there. Uh, and he really is the inspiration for the South trip. And then we have. Are you, are you sharing your screen right now? Yes. Does it? Yep, I see it. Okay, you, you it? do. Okay, yep. okay, I see it now. Thank you. Great. Uh, and then right after that, on December 11th, we'll go to the north. So we start in Delhi, we go to uh, Jaipur, and then we go to Rishikesh. So those are three cities in India that, um, you know, I, I feel like are very different from each other. And it really gives a, a good overview of Northern culture. And so of course, you're welcome to join us for either one or both of them. Um, you know, I think like I've been to retreats for a whole month, for example, Muji. And I think being somewhere for an entire month, it's like, wow, it, it, that in and of itself is a retreat because you're just so far removed from your life for such a long time. Um, of course, if you can only make one trip, that's, that's really wonderful too, but you are very, very welcome to join us on both trips. And uh, as I was mentioning before, South and North are very different cultures and it almost feels like you're traveling in two different countries. So um, South India has a different language, different customs, um, even different teachings and North India is, is also um, a region in of its own. Uh, so a little bit about us, my company is called Fair Connect and our travel program is called Escape 2. We've been doing this since 2010 and I've hosted a little bit over 800 travelers from all around the world. Uh, across India and recently Mexico as well. And essentially one of the reasons that I do this is because I know that India can be a little bit uh, overwhelming 
to people and it's it can be challenging to navigate sometimes on your own and I also just love being in groups and developing friendships and I, I think being in an environment that's completely new with people that are somewhat like-minded but also very diverse uh, it, that's just something that's uh, such a beautiful experience for me and it's really incredible in group tours how quickly people get comfortable with each other and, and really form lifelong friendships. So uh, we as an organization, our values are really to um, be as sustainable and eco-friendly as possible where we're traveling. So, um, you know, whenever possible, we try to leave a light carbon footprint. Uh, and at the same time, we're really interested in understanding local cultures, respecting local traditions and becoming locals very quickly. And so, as I mentioned, uh, I myself, my partner, we've spent a lot of time with teachers and in ashrams and retreats ourselves across India, um, you know, from uh, Muji to Ramnam Harishi's ashram to transcendental med meditation retreats. And so, we really want to share the essence of India through its teachers, its cities, its villages. And ultimately, we're really trying to help you uh, deepen your understanding, deepen your path. So starting off with the South trip, as Bill mentioned, there will be optional morning yoga and meditation sessions. India can be quite a chaotic country. You know, there's just, there's a lot going on. I think everybody's probably heard that it's almost like a, um, a roller coaster of uh, all your senses, you know, like smells and colors and sounds. And so I really love doing yoga and meditation in the morning just to ground myself. And uh, I've taught a couple of yoga classes already on my tours. And so it's a really good way for us to connect with each other and just bring um, the essence of, of silence into our day and set the tone for the rest of the day. So that's very much optional if you'd like to participate. Um, and it's all very beginner level yoga. So, uh, you know, if you don't have a yoga practice, you can definitely still join. I use a lot of non-dual um, teachings infused into my yoga poses. So I think that's, that's pretty unique. And South, of course, as I mentioned, we will be visiting Ramana Maharishi's ashram. And it's really wonderful because they do, um, you know, you can do everything from listening to some of his teachings in English. They do have an English session every single day. So we can listen to that. We can go into the caves where he meditated. Um, the ashram's quite open and there's, it's all volunteer led by his devotees. So we'll have some meals there. There's lots of time for quiet contemplation. And then every day uh, in the morning and in the evening, they have um, these chant chants. And uh, it's really beautiful to see. There's a lot of children to children devotees who live at the ashram. So it's really beautiful to see um, all these generations living and um, steeped in the truth. Uh, so that, that'll be a, a very, I think, unique experience for everybody. And uh, we will also do the circle ambulation of Arunachala Hill. So it's like one of the most sacred walks that you can go on. And it's said that uh, your soul already has decided who you're going to meet uh, when you do when you do that circle circle ambulation around the hill. And this area that we're going to, it really feels like you're stepping back in time. Uh, so we'll go from Bangalore, which is a, a modern city into um, into our natural and it feels like we're kind of going back almost like a thousand years or so. So that's just a great cultural travel experience. And as far as who's welcome on the trip, uh, honestly, anybody that's over 18 interested in deepening their spiritual understanding through travel, visiting energetically charged sites, and enhancing their experiences with a group of like-minded people from around the world. And we are getting interest from around the world, which is really cool. I know just this morning, I think we got uh, somebody from Switzerland. So uh, I think that'll be wonderful to meet people from everywhere. 
Uh, so just starting off, we'll, we'll start off in uh, Bangalore, which you can see is a very large city, but there's lots of pockets of peas and greenery, and we'll be doing a lot of activities, um, whether it's uh, doing a sound meditation session or visiting a dance village. Every activity has really been designed to showcase some of the ways that divinity and how how much the population of India believes in um, higher consciousness and surrenders to higher consciousness. And, you know, that will take a variety of forms. And that's what we're really trying to showcase to you through some of the activities that we do in the city. So for example, we may, um, we're, we're going to visit a Sikh temple called a Gurudwara. And uh, I think it's a lovely place to understand, you know, how they've taken uh, the teachings of the ultimate truth and how they've embodied it through acts of service for uh, people that are less privileged. We'll go to a dance village to learn about how um, these dancers have devoted their life to dancing to the divine. Um, and then we'll travel from the city to the countryside. So this is Arunachal. This is where Ramana Maharishi lived. His ashram's right close to the hill. And so, uh, as I mentioned, the circle ambulation will be around this hill. It's a 14 kilometer walk. If anybody doesn't want to walk, we have alternatives as well. But uh, it's a really beautiful walk and a lot of devotees do it. And I've done it myself and it's, um, it's, it's powerful. So, I wanted to just quickly go over um, the landing page for the South trip. Uh, so you'll see here the group size is about 12 to 15. Uh, we're about one third full. So we definitely recommend that if you want to sign up to get in touch or just go ahead and click this button um, book, you'll see the price. So it's $22.75 for a shared room for one person or $28.75 for a single room. My email is right here, so you can always feel free to email me if you have questions. But if you go to book, it'll take you to a few of our tours. And so if you want to sign up for um, the sacred teachings, you'll just click on this link. And then if you wanted to also book for the North trip, it's just right underneath. So what I wanted to talk about is a little bit more regarding, um, you know, you can see the full itinerary if you haven't already, but um, perhaps some of the things that you might have questions around, which are the logistics. So if you do, if you haven't already explored uh, this page, there is a frequently asked questions and that has everything from what's included. Now what's included, I'll go into it again on the slides, but essentially total pre-departure support. So we want to make sure that you have all your information on health, culture, safety, arrival details, what to pack, um, a visa, which is very, very simple to do for India. So you have all those details as well as how you'll get picked up from the airport, um, you know, how will we get you to your accommodation? And um, also what's included are the meals. Most of the meals are included. We have some space for free time. So you can kind of do your own thing, but um, meals are mostly included. And then entrance fees to all the activities on the itinerary are also included. The things that you'll want to do on your own is um, round trip airfare, visa, travel insurance, any kind of laundry. Although I don't really first see people drinking um, much. Uh, if you did want to get a glass of wine, I personally like to have a glass of wine every now and then, but if you did want to do that, that's not included. And then activities that you may do in your own free time um, or shopping, massage, et cetera, um, those are not included. And then we have here um, some deadlines. So we, uh, it's okay if you've missed the March 15th deadline for a deposit. Um, we have the trip open until about August 15th. Uh, I do feel that the trip will 
probably be booked up by then. Uh, so I definitely think if you want to reserve a spot, please go for it. Uh, but yeah, the, the absolute last day to register is August 15th. There's a refund and cancellation policy, and this is the same for the North trip as well. Um, but ultimately, if you are, if you do need to cancel for any reason, uh, we have uh, the cancellation policy for if you do it 90 days before, 45 days before, and then 45 days or less. Now, um, going back to the presentation of what if you catch COVID if you're on the trip and you can't participate. So on my last tour in Mexico, uh, we actually did catch COVID. Uh, one, no, we, one person did catch COVID. Um, and essentially what you have to do is quarantine for about five days uh, in your hotel room where meals will be provided to you. And you should check the your country's COVID-19 protocols if you need to produce a negative test before you fly back. I know in the United States, you no longer have to do that. And a lot of countries, you no longer have to do that. but um, you, you should just check also for any updates to that during our pre-departure orientation in August, we'll go over that, um, but also we'll keep you updated as, as best as possible as you know, and anything changes. If anything, I think it's going to get more and more relaxed over time rather than more strict, uh, but currently these, this is sort of the, the protocol. We do ask that um, whenever possible on buses, trains, planes, when we're together and there's crowds, it's good to wear masks. We don't need to wear masks, um, you know, when we're just together having meals or, um, you know, doing certain activities together, but you, just on transportation, I think it's a good idea, especially when we'll be with other locals um, to, to mask up. Um, we do recommend being vaccinated. You don't have to be vaccinated, but we do recommend it um, to avoid needing medical assistance. If you don't have uh, a vaccine card, you're still able to participate in travel. So that's a little bit about the South trip. Does anybody have any specific questions about the South? This is so awesome. I have um, just one question about meals. Like, is it vegetarian or vegan or meat or is it in restaurants? Is it in people's homes? What's what's the meals like? Yeah, great, great question. Thank you, Lisa. Um, the meals are going to be vegetarian and vegan. Um, some of the places that we're going to, like for example, Rishikesh, there's no meat allowed in that entire city. <laughs> you just cannot get meat anywhere. Um, you know, these spiritual cities do tend to be completely vegetarian. So um, the meals will be vegetarian or vegan. Um, if you are vegan, just let us know in advance. Everything can be veganized. If you're gluten-free, you have celiac or anything like that, that's very easy for us to do as well. If you have a nut allergy, uh, when you do register, you'll be able to send us any dietary restrictions and uh, we'll, we'll be able to take care of it for you. Uh, as far as the meals, we will have on each trip at least one a meal with a family because that's just such a it's such a sweet thing to do to have a home cooked meal when you're traveling. Uh, but most of the other meals will be at restaurants, and it's a really wide variety of food. Like I'm such a foodie, so I really want people to experience food that you may have never tried in your life before. Mm. That sounds really good. I you know. I was with Muji for uh, many months, several times. They only uh, prepare vegetarian food, and it has such a variety of of great, uh, great uh, uh, compliments to your palate. I mean, it's just amazing what you can do with vegetarian food only. And and Rupert also is all vegetarian. And I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, how will the group move? Is it uh, is it on a single bus? Is it, uh, it uh, how does it? What's the transportation? Yeah, so uh, we have a little mix of everything in the south. Um, we'll use tuk tuks and buses. Tuk tuks are like the local form of transportation, and so we'll use tuk tuks and then a group bus that we have just for the group. 
uh, and then for the north, we'll be doing um, both a, a bus that we've hired for the group as well as a, a local train ride. I think the, the train itself is an experience in India. And then one domestic flight from Rishikesh uh, back to Delhi for your return flight home. So it's, it's kind of a mix of transportation. And I think what I really want to also uh, emphasize is uh, the difference between the north and the south. So the north is definitely more fast paced. You're traveling between uh, almost four different cities. So you're doing Delhi, Agra, which is where the Taj Mahal is, Jaipur and Rishikesh. So it's um, not relaxed. <laughs> um, and then the south is much more relaxed. So you're really, we're really just going from Bangalore to Arunachal. Um, so I, I just wanted to, you know, uh, be clear about that in case somebody is looking for a more relaxed experience or a more fast paced experience. Um, you mentioned uh, the transportation tuk tuk or I'm not sure what it is, but I wanted to look it up so I would know more about what you're talking about. Yeah, I'll actually share that right now. I think everybody can see my screen. So let me just. Oh, it's, it's a rickshaw. Yeah, it's an uh, auto rickshaw. Oh. So that's okay. this is what it looks like. And how do you pronounce it? Uh, auto rickshaw. Oh, okay. I thought you said something else earlier. Or tuk-tuk, either one. Tuk-tuk. Tuk-tuk, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> we can fit about three of us in the back. So uh -huh. um, it's kind of fun to learn how to do it. We usually just kind of split up into um, small little groups and each take one to the place that we're going to. M mostly we'll be traveling by a group bus that we've had, you know, we've rented just for the group. But sometimes it's fun to take these. Uh, you get to see the city. It's like open air. Oh, it looks like a lot of fun to me. So. Yeah. So, so how easy is it to get lost from your group? <laughs> No, it's not. It's not. I've never had anybody get lost. Okay. Good, <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to go back to a, uh, a question that Karen had in the first 10-minute uh, uh, session, and she was talking about being uh, not vaccinated. And, uh, in, or was that this session? Was, was that this session? It was this session. Okay, so uh, maybe it was before you were talking about uh, with, to me, oh, it was in our pre-meeting. You said that uh, there was no trouble, no problem leaving the United States not vaccinated, but you couldn't get back in the United States not vaccinated. Um, I believe at this point they've lifted that. I can double check. Um, but I do believe that that has been lifted as far as... Um, okay. Uh, it, it okay. has been it has been lifted to the United States, but Canada still has. I think you have to show a negative COVID test at this time. I mean, this probably is all going to change in the next couple of months. But the United States just changed a couple of days ago, so you don't have to do anything going into India, and you don't have to do anything coming back into the states. Okay, good. Yeah, so uh, if you are traveling from countries that are a little bit more restrictive, like Canada, um, then, you know, we should definitely connect after the webinar and just take a look at some of the policies that are in place right now. Um, and then just note that, you know, it, it could, it's possible to change. So, so Prechi, uh, will, uh, will we be traveling with part of your team or was that photograph just the only time we'll see them? No, all of us will be together. So we're all going to be staying with you. It'll be um, my partner, Pradeep. Uh, and actually you can, I think you should be able to see him. Let me just see uh, if I can show you guys. Well, you'll see a little photo of him. <laughs> so that's him, Pradeep Krishnapa. Uh, he is incredible. And he, 
he knows every regional local language there is to know in India. So he's a really great communicator and um, he loves being with travelers. So he'll be with us throughout the whole trip. So it'll be me and him. Um, my partner, Angie, she's actually not related to me, even though we have the same last name. Uh, she she usually joins our, our tours. It depends on how many folks we get. Um, if we're about 15, then she'll join us. If we're a little bit less than, um, you know, for 12 or under, then it'll just be pretty and myself. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Lindsay. All right. So let me just get back in here and start off on the north. Just give me one moment. So uh, Uncomforting India's Spiritual Heart, uh, the reason we titled this trip as Uncovering India's Spiritual Heart is because I think that, um, you know, going into these crazy cities sometimes like Delhi and Jaipur and even the Taj Mahal, uh, you know, there's just a lot going on. It's very stimulating. So for me, I wanted people to experience yes the culture but also the layer that's underneath all of that which uh which is the fact that it, these are very very spiritual places so again um like the south trip there will be morning yoga and meditation sessions and we'll be traveling between these four cities delhi agra jaipur and vishikesh this is a pretty unique itinerary not a lot of people go from jaipur to vishikesh you may have heard of the golden triangle in india so a lot of people just stick to delhi agra and jaipur but we really wanted to include Vishikesh in the itinerary because it, it is the source of the Ganges River. That's where the Ganges River flows out and nourishes the entire country from. Uh, and so uh, the Indian people believe and um, sages have for centuries uh, lived in Rishikesh because it's a, a very, very energetically charged place. And um, for myself, I've experienced it uh, definitely through Muji's retreats, but also on my own. Uh, and I think in Rishikesh, like, there is just um, a layer of spirituality that uh, you cannot find in other parts of India, apart from Arunachal, uh, which is in the south. But, um, you know, it's like when, for example, when Muji comes to Rishikesh, every shop owner in Rishikesh knows about it and they have posters of him up or any teacher and you know from any anyone from like the person that's cleaning dishes to um the person that owns the coffee shop so there's just this um the entire town is prepared for these masters to come through uh and teach in their city so i think that's that's very special and also i feel like um this particular trip is is very much about how spirituality is interwoven into the chaos of each of these places. And so that's why I refer to this trip as a little bit more fast paced because um, we are traveling between a lot of different places and a lot of different sites. We're going to be um, starting off in Delhi, and one of the first places that we'll go to is Nizamuddin Masjid, which a lot of people don't know about. It's actually um, one of the oldest Sufi mosques in the world, and not just in the country, but in the world. And uh, it's incredible that Sufism has been able to survive in India. It's not, you know, Sufism is not the birthplace. Uh, India is not the birthplace of Sufism, but... Um, the fact that it had it got such a stronghold in India is it's really really incredible, um, and of course Ananda Mai's ashram. And to me, this is very special because she was one of the the only female self realized non dual teachers of India. So there's been a lot of male, but not that many female. And so Ananda Mai Ma is is definitely a person if you're on the non dual Advaita spiritual path. Um, you know, to visit her ashram is, is really, really wonderful. Uh, this is a picture of one of the activities that we'll be doing, which is uh, the monkey temple in Jaipur and Jaipur after we leave Delhi and Agra after the Taj Mahal. 
Jaipur is just filled with beautiful architecture, um, beautiful colors. It's a royal, former royal city. So even a temple dedicated to monkeys is, uh, it's just incredible. And you actually, there's just lots of monkeys uh, running around here. They might even jump on us. Um, so this is one of the places that I didn't want to miss. And I wanted to make sure uh, people had a feeling of how, you know, when some of our teachers say like your self doesn't end at your body you know it extends out to some of the other life forms the other um you know animals and people around you I think that's that that sense is felt very strongly here uh the human and animal boundary is is like it, it blurs you you know animals and humans are very much coexisting together and this is a great place to experience that. Uh, and then just a little bit more uh, about Rishikesh. So some of the morning sessions for meditation, we can actually go right to the Ganges River and meditate. And that, that will be really, really, really beautiful for uh, all of us. I personally can't wait to do some of your meditations still, um, just with the Ganges River flowing behind us. And also, um, one other activity that will be really beautiful to experience is the evening candlelit, candlelit prayers. So there's just thousands of candles that are um, lit up around the river. And uh, it's like just the vibration of the chanting and the river and the mountains behind us. Uh, that's, that's just unforgettable. Um, yeah, this is basically uh, the town of Rishikesh, and we we essentially walk. Um, we're able to walk all over along the the river, and there's little ashrams and cafes, and um, and basically activities that we can do just right along the river. So I believe we've already gone over what's included, what's not included. If anybody has any questions about that just let me know. Um, I've also pulled up the itinerary for the north. So this is essentially the north. It's really the same as far as booking goes, but uh, it's twenty six fifty for a shared, thirty one fifty for a private. Um, you can go to the book now button. It'll take you to the same page that the south does and then if you just want to do the north you can book that last third trip on the page and then here um you'll you have access to the full itinerary of what we'll be doing one thing i didn't mention was the taj mahal so of course we'll be doing uh sunrise at the taj mahals i'm so sorry that we'll all wake up at like 3 a.m in the morning to get there, but it's going to be really, really worth it. And we'll avoid a lot of the crowds. Uh, and it's the most beautiful lighting at sunrise. And then we'll head over to Jaipur by train on day number four. Uh, and then we have built in free afternoons or free evenings. And I think that's very important, especially given that this is a spiritual experience. We'd love to have We'd love to give you your space to process and reflect and go, um, you know, inside if you need to. So after a few days in Jaipur, we go off to the mountains in Rishikesh. All right, I think that pretty much ends the explanation as far as the trips go. Um, I wanted to make sure folks knew a little bit about like the hotel situation. Didn't want you guys to think that you're sleeping on cots on the floor or anything like that. We are staying at clean, hygienic, um, pretty modern hotels throughout. So uh, for example, we're going to be staying in Park Plaza and I'll send those details to you once you book or even before you book if you need me to. Uh, for example, in Delhi, we'll be staying at the Park Plaza in East Delhi. Um, we usually use this uh, each time, I think it's it's a good good place to rest and just get get some good sleep. So this is for um, if you're 
you know, coming with a friend that you're maybe not wanting to share a bed with, there, there's two, you know, two beds. Or if you are a couple or family or something like that, then you can certainly um, have a, a shared bed as well. So this is just an example of the one that we're staying at in Delhi. And then in Vishikesh, uh, we're staying at the Lakshmanjula Divine Resort. I actually stayed behind this, not this one, but behind this for the Muji retreat when I was there. And I, um, I have had travelers stay here before and they have a wonderful um, yoga space as well and a place for us to do meditation and a really great view of the river and a wellness spa. So I think this is a good place to stay. Um, and then for uh, the South, we'll be staying at the ITC Gardenia. Um, again, kind of similar to the, uh, the place that I sent you earlier for Delhi. Um, just a good, clean, modern hotel, um, very, very centrally located as well. All right, I will stop the presentation now. And if anybody has any questions, um, I think my room's getting darker because it's it's just getting darker outside. So I apologize if, if the lighting's not that great. I have a question. Uh, this is just awesome. Um, <clears throat> so I have two questions. The first question is about the hotels. Are we staying in some of the hotels more than one night? Are we moving every day? Are we going from like wake up and pack and then go somewhere else? Or are we staying in some locations more than one night? Oh, this is such a great question. Yeah, no, um, we're staying for a couple of nights in each hotel. And uh, that's just so it's not exhausting for everybody. I, I definitely don't want you all to only have to stay one night. Um, so for example, in Bangalore, uh, we will, let me just get back to the page here. Uh, we'll stay in Bangalore all the way up until, um, for, for about four nights, because we're not going into uh, our natural or Thiruvannamalai until day five. So for four nights, we'll stay in Bangalore. And then for the next four nights, we'll stay um, in Thiruvannamalai over here. And then we, we come back to Bangalore for two nights to end the trip in Bangalore so that folks can fly out. Uh, and then for the North trip, um, we're moving around a little bit more than the South trip, um, but we'll be staying day one, day two, and day three. Um, and the night of day three, we'll be staying in Delhi. So that will be, um, I believe that's this, this hotel. Uh, so we'll be staying there for about three nights. Okay. And then we move to Jackor for another three you're nights. Not, you're not screen sharing right now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> Let me get back to the screen. Uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, we'll be staying at each hotel about three to four nights. Oh, I love that. And so the second question I have is about flying in. So the dates you have here on the website are from like December 1st through December 10th, and then the 11th through the 22nd. Do you put on the website, like what day we need, to, like if it starts on December 1st, then we would have to fly in like the day before then, right? And then we fly, like we would, would we fly on back to, on December 22nd or December 23rd? Yeah, uh, so because it depends on where you're traveling from. So if you're traveling from the United States, it's usually anywhere from a 14 to like 20 hour flight. Um, so you, if you're wanting to arrive on December 20, uh, December 1st, you'll want to um, fly out on uh, maybe even the night of November 29th. Okay. Um, because you lose a couple of hours when you get to India. So most likely you'll fly on November 29th and then, um, you know, fly for about, let's say an average of 18 hours if you have a stopover. 
and mm -hmm. and then arrive in India by December 1st. Uh, and then when you fly out on December 23rd, you can essentially fly out any time after uh, lunchtime. And most international flights out, out of India are at nighttime anyway. So uh, you'll be flying out probably at like eight o'clock or nine o'clock on December 23rd. Okay, great, thanks. And I, I will, um, you know, I, I'm available via email so I can help every individual with flights. So we can look at flights together and see what makes sense for the destination that you're flying out of. And also the other thing I wanted to share is that we are doing a pre-departure orientation. So for anybody that has booked and signed up, we will be doing a pre-departure orientation sessions in July and August, which will uh, go much more deeply into the logistics that you need for prepping everything from flights to visas and what to pack. Preeti. Is there, uh, for people that are um, traveling alone, um, is there any kind of a system that uh, helps them to like partner with other people that, so that they're not feeling like they're like traveling alone? And, and maybe some people just want to travel alone, but it seems like if you're, if you're not traveling with someone, it might be, uh, an idea for a buddy system? Do you have anything like that? I haven't had that, but um, that's a really good idea. I think what we'll do is we'll create a little group of everybody that's traveling for each trip. And then we can figure out if you're flying solo, um, you know, if, if you are on the same flight as somebody else or flying from a, a you know, a destination that you can match up or link up with. Once you get to India, um, you know, it, it's like we're all together so much that it really, um, you know, we're, we kind of mesh very well with each other. Um, but, you know, that's, I think that's a great idea. We can definitely uh, make sure everybody that's flying solo or coming solo feels connected to everybody else. Uh, so a buddy system would be great. Uh, I know for uh, the people that have already booked, we have a, a good mix already. So we have we have several solo travelers and um, some people that are coming in pairs, like a mother, daughter, or a couple. Uh, so yeah, what I've noticed is people are very, very open and um, like everybody kind of connects to each other. Cool, thank you. The only thing yeah. I was wondering when he was talking about that uh, is if you do go solo and you don't mind sharing a room, that's what I just was wondering about. Yeah, um, we can do our best to uh, match you up with somebody that is also going solo and um, is open to sharing a room. So you'll have that uh, kind of what I was showing earlier, which is the... Okay. The the thing, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. I'm just was getting the information on this. I might have a friend, my husband's not interested in going to India. So um, uh, I might have a girlfriend I won't know until the middle of the week. So I don't want to commit until I start talking to her. So that's all I was asking. Yeah. Great. Good. Well, uh, Karen, we'll have uh, this recording. Uh, we'll, we'll go out to everyone that has registered. So you'll have a copy of it so you can share the link with your friend and they can be updated with everything that's been presented tonight. Great. Uh, it looks so, like Mark has uh, his hand up. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Hey. So I was just going to ask you if you potentially do both tours, how do you get from south to north as far as where does one end and where does one start? And is that transportation on your own or would that be inclusive? And one of the tour costs if you decide to do both of them. Yeah, so uh, we will actually probably all end up flying together because uh, I think there are already people who are going to do both. I know uh, Bill, myself, and uh, Pradeep are definitely flying from Bangalore, which is where the South trip ends. And then we go to Delhi 
which is where the north trip starts the next day. So we'll probably end up flying together on a domestic flight. Uh, it's not part of the cost of the trip, but um, what I think I'll do is whoever does end up wanting to do both, we'll just include it. It's, it's pretty cheap. It's about, it could be anywhere from 50 to $75 uh, for just a one-way uh, domestic flight. And it's only about two and a half hours in transit. So once I have that list, then I'll just check in with everybody. If, if you all just want me to book it for you, then I, I can just do that um, at one go and we can all, all fly together. And then I did have the same question as Bill and Karen as far as single travel. So um, I guess my the one question I would have is, so if you signed up for shared accommodation, but you're single travel and that doesn't work out, then does it shift from shared to single cost? Um, I, I will not switch it. We will usually, like we haven't had that problem before, but for example, with, um, let's just say a male like yourself, who's traveling, will pair you up with someone of the same gender. Um, and I can already say that, uh, you might just end up sharing with Pradeep. Uh, so okay. you're, you'll already be set, but no, if you've signed up for a shared, um, you know, we, you, you keep that price. We don't, um, upcharge you to a single. Okay. And then as far as travel insurance, is that on your own to get, or do y'all help with that? Or how is travel insurance arranged? So uh, we will go through that during pre-departure orientation, but you do want to purchase it on your own. The reason we don't sign you up for it is because we do get folks from different countries and each country has their own um, travel insurance that's best for them. And then apart from that, uh, you know, people might want to be insured at different levels. So uh, we have some recommendations of companies that uh, we recommend, for example, Travel Guard uh, is a really good one. Um, and it usually based on your age and how long you're going to be in the country for, um, it usually averages about $120 for about four weeks in India. Um, from what I've seen. So we will recommend that during the pre-departure orientation. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And I was just going to say, I, um, from what Bill explained at the first, I, the spirituality of it and the meditation and the yoga is just right up my um, alley on that. Yeah. So because I'm, I, you know, I love ritual and temples and ashrams, even though I've never been to one. <laughs> but truly, all of that would be the essence, because I've never been to India, but I've always had this magnanimous curiosity about it. But I've even read about the prayer ceremony last night at the Ganges River and things like that. Um, and that just heightens my curiosity that much more. So I'm pleased to see um, that realm of uh, travel to be made available. Um, that's, that's right up my alley. So thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're very, very excited to offer it. Um, uh, there was, uh, oh, oh Preachy, you probably didn't see that Lisa said she's doing the, the North and the South. Oh, you are, Lisa. I'm going. You you did it. Yeah, it was in the first couple of minutes. Just the energy of you and Bill, and just I've always wanted to go. It's just it's been a dream of mine forever, and I don't know what that is, but it's it's of course like I'm thinking I don't want to go to India by myself, to land in this country, and so the whole thing of like. I don't know, it's just it's all it's all taken care of, you know, it's just like transportation and accommodation and um, so I just want to thank you both Bill and Preachy for tonight and because I really was like no I kept saying to Bill no I'm just going on just the one, but I, I really want to go. Um, I like the quiet I like well, I like both of them like, but the whole thing with um, Ramana Maharshi. I don't want to miss that. Yeah. In the South. Yeah. 
Oh, that's that's so exciting, Lisa. And you know, India's a I mean, I'm not trying to pressure anybody, but India's a long trip and it's uh I often feel like when I go like sometimes a week doesn't feel enough, you know, it feels like a long trip. So if if you have the time, if you have the resources to come for the full month, um yeah, if if you can do that, I highly recommend it. Because that's just for myself, you know, that's how I like to travel. When I go to India, I try to be there for a month. So great. I have one more question. Um, is each of the excursions, um, like if somebody doesn't want to go to one, like, like I'm thinking I might not want to go to the Taj Mahal, believe it or not, but it just doesn't really have an interest to me. Maybe it will. But if somebody doesn't want to go to something, I guess it depends on if we're staying in the hotel another night or is how, how does that work? Yeah, thank you for asking that. We always allow you to opt out of everything. And one thing I always like to say about group experiences and just group tours and itineraries in general is, you know, there's so many different personalities and everybody's coming for a different reason. So of course there are going to be activities that you just won't like, or you won't resonate with. Um, you know, I, I think that's just the nature of travel in general. So if there's anything that you don't want to do, um, no pressure to join at all. There's always opportunities to go to a quiet park or a coffee shop or, um, you know, like you could go to one of the um, temples that maybe aren't on the itinerary or something that, you know, a museum that's maybe not um, part of the trip, but you really want to go to. So we always um, have that flexibility. And uh, that always happens on every single tour. We'll have folks that, you know, opt out of certain things. Hmm. Yeah, there's there's no lack of things to do. And there's also um, always time for quiet contemplation. I know one of the ladies that's joining us for the North trip, she's an architect and uh, she's bringing her sketchbook along. So she just, she just wants to, at times, have that space to, you know, sit in front of a, a beautiful building or a temple and just sketch. So there's a, very much, uh, we want to hold the space for you to be able to do that. It's going to be a, it's going to be an awesome tour. I can't wait. And I, I love the presentation. Preachy, you sent me when you were describing it, uh, coming back, going to and coming back from Garrison. And even more so with tonight's presentation, you just really made it very clear. And also the feeling uh, of the experience, you're, you're a pro. And uh, I, like Lisa, I wouldn't want to go, I, I wouldn't want to do this alone. Uh, it's just, it's just too, it's too big. Uh, and to to be led by someone who is like minded and love for truth and has a uh, has family in India and and a, a team uh, is perfect. Uh, it's a perfect formula for me and for for me to want to be uh, to promote this and and share it with our our family, our extended family that is in a variety of different places all over the world and people that we love that are here tonight and that will watch this recording. Thank you so much for this great presentation. And thank you all for the great questions. And for all of you that are watching the replay, uh, we'd love to have you join us and uh, look forward to it. And great questions tonight. Thank you for your awesome participation in this, uh, the questions that everyone's going to benefit from. And Prachi, you're awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. See you very soon in India. All right. <laughs> thank you. Good night, everyone. We'll see you out over there. Bye-bye. <laughs>